Hello, everybody. It's the man of stumbling speech, Roland Dell. You know, I've learned a lot from a man for the last dozen years because I was raised a Calvinist. And I was taught the scriptures, specific passages, I should say, like the narrow way, um, uh, by from an Arminian perspective, or, you know, passages like uh, neither um, an effeminate nor whoremonger, um, so forth and so on, enters the kingdom of heaven. I didn't understand these things because I thought it was all by grace. And, you know, once you're saved, that's, uh, you're, um, you're locked in, that type of thing. And maybe it's true. Maybe it's true because if, if the Lord, um, is doing a work in you, I really believe in your good fertile ground. I think he's going to work these things out in you. I also learned about capital sin as opposed to normal sin, and that goes into the um, Old Testament. There was capital uh, sin against God as well as just regular sins. So there are different levels of um, sinning, even though sin is sin, and none of it's... Uh, I don't want to be uh, start off by my uh, video being confusing, but uh, I'm just saying that I did learn a lot of, a lot of, um, grow a lot in my scriptural understanding of who the Lord is through uh, being taught some Arminian type of doctrines in specific passages, things that the Calvinists really didn't have a, a good handle on, I don't think. And it's just um, enhanced my understanding of the scriptures. Also, another one is the difference between uh, Hades and hell. Most of the churches don't know the difference between Hades and hell. I think I have the answer for that as well. I learned the answer for that as well. Another one is the difference between the spirit and soul. I think I've learned the uh, the difference in that. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to start this video off, um, uh, you know, uh, puffing myself up and what I've learned the last dozen years. But I have to give credit to a brother that. Um, Brother Justin, who really helped me uh, to grow and understand things of the Lord. But what I wanted to read tonight was something that I never thought that I would say, and and it's a quote from Friedrich Nietzsche, the German philosopher. The I, I believe he was an atheist. I, I think, therefore, I am, if I'm not mistaken. But this is an interesting quote. He says, Beware the monster you kill, because you too will become that monster. I never thought that being a follower of Jesus Christ that I would ever be quoting Nietzsche. But now I see this is what happens when you operate under the flesh, under your own steam, especially while applying the letter of the law and not Christ to others, although you may think you are. This, uh, the one who doesn't think himself guilty of this merely deceives himself. That's if he's doing the wrong kind of judging. And like a good lawyer or salesman, deceives others around him. And I'm just going to interject. This is a, one of the problems with lordship salvation, which I spoke about in my other video. But anyway, one thing that is uh, that most human beings are lacking in is the extended grace to others, in an extending grace to others, like our Lord did for us. I have beaten up my own ghost for years, believing it was the Lord who showed me greater truth of who I am and who I had become, which is true. Um, but armed with this new truth, I perceived in dealing with sociopathy, I drove into others head first to slay who I perceived they were. You know, the kind of people that hurt me. I wasn't going to let them get away with it anymore as I grew, you know, in my knowledge of what happened to me. Uh, although this was not my nature, I started noticing I tended to morph into those I had been the victim of, which is pretty scary. It starts with one of the, cl it starts with the ones closest to you and will move forward unless you apply the brakes. You have to recognize this own sin in yourself, even when you grow in the Lord. Those who think that they are above reproach will never concede to applying the brakes as the pride of life and often their own sense of justice, legalism in parentheses, only drives them further into self-righteous fury. Yet this is not the way of the Lord, who is gentle, forgiving, and full of mercy. 
Um, no, not Mary, but rather our Heavenly Father, who has graced us before the foundation of the earth in sending his only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as our atonement for sin. Jesus Christ is the reason that we are able to enter into relationship with God because of sin. Sin is what separates us from God. It's not going to heaven to protect your sinful hind part, but it is being um, forgiven for sin and being sanctified more and more into Christ's uh, image. The thing is, we can't do this under our own power, is my point. So, I'm going to continue reading. Grace, 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 I say, which no man can boast upon. As much as I may wish Jesus to be Lord of my life above all else, I am powerless in attempting any type of change within myself. Did you get that? Powerless in orchestrating any type of change, no matter how hard I may want to obtain it. I have learned some fantastic Arminian-type Bible passages about choosing to follow the narrow way these past dozen years, as I said. And that is a good thing in, in wishing to be firmly rooted in Christ. Yet the danger comes in from the wrong type of judging of others' heart. When the wrong type of judging of others' hearts occurs, and should, and should the tide be turned by others, it may be you is swept from such a rigid foundation of stone. Um, and I think I've experienced that. The problem is when when that rigid stone foundation is confused with being the rock who is only Jesus Christ or Lord and Savior, the ultimate judge. Woe be it unto men who try to walk in those shoes for only heretical hypocrisy, apostasy, and perhaps hell awaits them. And at the very best, the judgment of a teacher who taught many in error, or at the very worst, a false prophet. In my view, only a fool would seek such spiritual position of authority and responsibility. But I digress. The point is to be humble and non-assuming to another's status, which is strictly amongst him and the Lord God. Like the Galatians, we must be careful not to fall into our own heretical forms of worship and celebrations. But at the same time, we must be diligent not to overstep our own understanding and authority in the judgment of others, especially in being graced so much ourselves. Yes, we must maintain good order amongst the brethren, but be wise in taking command and control over those whom the Lord has graced, because it's grace, and I don't care how well uh, you can teach Bible and teach others. That's my point, and that was also my point in my last video uh, about Matthew chapter 7, 1 through 13, I believe it was. So, um, grace, grace, and only grace, I say. And uh, <laughs> it just amazes me because the Lord can use all things. There's truth in all things, Dr. Gross used to say, uh, the late Dr. Gross. And just to repeat, beware the monster you kill because you too will become that monster. That's what Nietzsche said. Uh, and that's like, um, you know, that's like taking the log out of your own eye before you take the speck out of your brothers. Um, same type of thing. You have to be aware that you've been graced and you have to extend that grace to others and not fall into um, judgmentalism, hypocrisy, and, um, and and especially not to build a whole, um, a whole faith upon uh, uh, we're going to make on sure that Lord Jesus Christ is Lord of our lives. Um, the Lord told me when I nearly drowned in the surf the first time after I got out of the Coast Guard, you can do nothing. And that means you can do nothing. As much as you want to follow the Lord, you can do nothing. It's all of grace. And you better be careful when you overstep that grace and start uh, and start taking trying to take command and control of others, even in your teaching. And that's what I wanted to say tonight.
God bless and thanks for watching. Bye.